Uh, last, in our last uh, service, we were talking about the right knowledge of God. And we were talking about we're talking about that in the past two Sundays now. We've been talking about the right knowledge of God. And we said that the right knowledge of God settles peace. We said knowledge is information received and we said knowledge is power. We said knowledge is what you have acquired, information you have acquired. We said knowledge is what you know. And putting what you know to practice is what produce results and what change lives. Putting what you know to practice. So wisdom is putting what you know correctly. And in the last meeting, we said knowledge is birth by revelation. We said revelation is a mother of knowledge. It is revelation that brings knowledge. Revelation impacts knowledge in us. Apostle Paul prayed for the church in, in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. From verse 15, he prayed for the church that God will grant them the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that they can know God deeper, more than the level in which they knew him. So we get to know God more when God keeps revealing himself to us. And when God keeps revealing himself to us, we get to know him. As God reveals, we know him. As God reveals, we know him. So knowledge comes from revelation. Revelation brings knowledge. So when we have the right knowledge of God and we apply it in our lives correctly, the word of God produces its very nature in our lives. The Bible says we are being transformed from glory to glory. As we behold the mirror, we behold the word as we keep looking, as we keep taking, getting revelation, obtaining knowledge in the world. By so doing, the Bible says, we are being transformed from glory to glory. The mind is being renewed. The information we have in our mind concerning God, concerning our lives, concerning the circumstances, change why because revelation has brought knowledge so everything begins to change and then when we begin to act accordingly we discover that everything about our lives to begin to change the word of god becomes fruitful in our lives so today i want us to talk on on something new and the topic of our message today is if you are willing and obedient. If you are willing and obedient. That's the topic of our message today. If you are willing and obedient. So it is one thing to be willing to have the will power, then it's another thing to be obedient. It's another thing to be obedient. There is a song we used to sing when we were in school, primary school. We used to sing this song. Just trust and obey, but there is no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. So be willing and be obedient. 
That's what we're talking about. Be willing. In you, have the willingness. Inside of us, make that decision. Because when we are willing, God is already willing. And let's go to the book of Luke chapter 5 from verse 12. Luke chapter 5 from verse 12. If you are willing and obedient, be willing and obedient because if you are willing and obedient, God is willing and God is ready. God is willing and God is ready. Luke chapter 5 from verse 12. Luke chapter 5 from verse 12 to verse number 16. Luke 5 from verse 12 to 16. And it happened when he was in a certain city that behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus and he fell on his face and implored him saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Hear what the man said. He said, Lord, if you are willing, if you want to, if you have the willpower, the willingness, the desire to, if you want to do it, he said, Lord, if you are willing, you can hear the man's confession. The man came in faith. Remember, he had a problem, leprosy. In those days, those who had leprosy were rejected. That is how it was in those days. Those who were lepers were rejected. In the old, leprosy was a like, like sin in the context today. Those who had leprosy were the rejected ones, put out of the camp. That's according to the Old Testament. They had to go through some spiritual cleansing before they can be restored back into the camp. So leprosy is a kind of rejected situation. The man had leprosy. And according to the Old Testament, those who had leprosy, nobody should touch them. You are not permitted to touch them. The priest has some rituals that the priest will do for them, for them to be restored, for them to be cleansed. So when this man met Jesus, he said, the Bible says, he came, number one, he came in humility. He approached Jesus in sincerity and in humility. Remember, our attitude matters. The way we approach him matters. That's why I told us in our last service that the way and manner in which we approach God matters. It's very important. It's very important because it also determines if we are receiving or we are not going to receive our attitude before God. The man came in sincerity and in humility. That is the first lesson I want us to learn. You see, he came and fell on his face, meaning he came and worshiped him. He acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah. The man, came in sincerity of heart. He came in humility in the spirit. That was his approach to Jesus. The Bible called him a man, a certain man, a certain man. So the Bible didn't even make mention of who the man was, what was his name. They say, when Jesus got to a certain city, behold, behold, a man full of, his name was not even known. Like the case of blind Bartimaeus, 
His name was not even known. Look at the case of Zacchaeus. Their names were mentioned. They were known. But this man, he was a rejected man. His name was not known, being coupled with the fact that he was leprous. He had leprosy all over his body. He was a rejected kind of person. His conditions and situations brought him re rejection. But when this man met Jesus, when he met Jesus, I want to believe that his encounter with Jesus was not by chance. He heard about Jesus and he came to Jesus. The way he came, he came in sincerity, he came in humility. Don't just read it in the fact that the man was free from leprosy. But there are things that were put in place that also contributed for his receiving. The fact that he met Jesus did not just change his situation and life. But the way and manner in which he came attracted Jesus' attention to him. The way and manner we approach God matters. If you are willing and obedient. Now, when the man met Jesus, in faith, he believed, he knew Jesus was the Messiah. And he knew Jesus can help him. He knew Jesus had his solution. He knew, but his problem was, he had one problem. He came in sincerity and in humility. He heard about Jesus being the Messiah and he, he believed in Jesus because if he didn't believe, he would not have come there. And he showed his belief by his humility. He showed his belief by the way he, he, he worshiped him to show that he believed, he acknowledged. Now, hear his statement. Hear what came out of his mouth to Jesus. He said, Lord, if you are willing, if you are willing, he said, you can make me clean. Hear what the man said? He said, I know you can do it. But the problem that I have now is, are you willing to do it? I don't have problem whether you can do it or you cannot do it. I know that you can do it. You have the ability to do it. You have what it takes to make me clean. You have what it takes to change my life. But I have a problem here. What is my problem? My problem is, are you willing to do it? In fact, do you want to do it? Yes, he can do it. But does he want to do it? Yes, he can change my life. But the question is, does he want to change my life? Yes, he can heal. He is a great healer. He is a great compassion healer. He heals with compassion. But the question is, does he want to heal me now? That was that man's fear. I know he can do it. But my question is, is he willing to do it? Does he want to do it? And the answer is yes. God is willing to those who are willing. Let's see the next verse, verse 13. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him saying, I am willing to be cleansed. Here Jesus' response. Jesus told him, he stretched his hand and touched the man. In the natural sense, in the Old Testament, you don't touch people with leprosy. You don't touch people with leprosy. But Jesus came with a mandate. Remember, he was the Messiah. He came to save his people from their sin. He came to heal. He came to heal. He came to deliver. He came to bless. He came to forgive sins. He came to cleanse from sin. That leprosy was a kind of sin, according to the Old Testament. 
So that proved Jesus' messianic mission, that his mission is to come to seek and save his people from their sin. He touched the man and told him, I am willing. I want to make you clean. He said, be clean. The man wasn't expecting Jesus to touch him because he knew as a leper, he was rejected in his own society. He knew as a leper, he was rejected in his own society. So he knew with those with leprosy cannot be touched. That's what he knew, that those with leprosy cannot be touched. So he was surprised that Jesus touched him and told him, I am willing to be cleansed. Jesus touched him and told him, I am willing to be cleansed. So the answer now is, if we are willing and obedient, Jesus is willing. Yes, it is his will to heal you. It is his will to bless us. It is his will to deliver us. But are we willing and are we obedient? Let's look at, before we come back to this Luke chapter 5, let's look at something in Isaiah. Go to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 and verse 19. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 and verse 19. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, and verse number 19. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, and verse 19. He said, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they, though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Verse 19, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. That is it. If you are willing, if you have, if you have the willingness, the, volu the volunteer power, if you are willing and obedient, God is willing and God is faithful. So there is no reason to ask question whether God is willing. The answer is there. Jesus told the man, I am willing. And this is God saying in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. He said, if you are willing, because me, I am willing. God is willing. God is ready. But are we ready? Are we ready? Do we have the willingness? He said, if you are ready, he said, pick up your cross and begin to follow me. I want us to understand that in the things of God, everyone has a role to play. Everyone has a responsibility to do. God is willing. Are we willing? Are we ready? Have we decided? Because God has decided. Yes, God is willing. God has decided. But the question is, are we ready? Many are serving God, but yet still being controlled. Are serving God, but are still controlled by the powers of the devil. We serve God, God, yes, God, 
but yet we are still being influenced by the devices of Satan. When the goings are good, Jesus is Lord. When the goings are tough, difficult, Jesus, because we look at Jesus in a bad light. We look at him in a negative light. These are all Satan's devices. When things are going well, Jesus is Lord. Hello, I have a testimony. God is good all the time. When things are going difficult, we begin to look at Jesus as if he disappointed us. The situation you are might look difficult, might look bad, but there is no bad inside. There is no bad thing inside. God is still saying something. God is still talking in that situation. Don't because of happenings around you. Change your mind. Change your thoughts about God. Because in that situation, God is still saying something. God is willing. God is ready. He is willing and he is ready. Believe in your heart the word of God and confess with your mouth. Believe inside your heart the word and confess it with your mouth. I believe that God is ready. God is willing to help me, to intervene for me. And I confess it with my mouth. I confess that with my mouth. And we move from glory to glory. I believe that God is willing. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt his ability. I don't doubt it. Go back to Luke chapter 5. 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 Verse 13. Then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing to be cleansed. Immediately, the leprosy left him. Verse 14. And he charged him to tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them, just as Moses commanded. 15. However, the report went around setting around concerning him all the more, and great multitude came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. So if we are willing and we are obedient, God has made the provision already. God has provided everything already. But it takes our willingness and it takes our obedience. Our willingness and our obedience to divine instruction. Knowing God's word only, to know the word only cannot change our life. Remember, it is when we do it when we know it and when we do it, when we know the word and when we do the word, that is what we change our lives. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. It doesn't change our lives. I know he is a healer. I believe he is a healer. I act upon his word. That changed our life. So when we are willing to serve him and we are obedient to his word and instructions, God is willing. God is ready. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is willing and God is ready. Open your mouth and I will feel it. Open your heart, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, O ye everlasting doors, and let the King of glory come. In. Be ready. Be ready to receive him. Be ready to accommodate him. 
and be ready to keep him. It is one thing to have the power of God today. It's another thing to have it tomorrow. It is one thing to have the anointing of God in your life today. It's another thing to keep it, to use it tomorrow. You receive blessing today. It's easy to receive it. But to keep that blessing and use it tomorrow, it takes maintenance. That one is difficult. Because, because disobedience will always snatch, still will always steal that blessing from us. Disobedience. He said, if we are willing and obedient, if we have the willingness and we are obedient, we receive it, we cannot keep it. The anointing you received yesterday, where is it today? Today we are looking for anointing again. What happened with the one we received? Hear this and hear this very clearly. Anointing will change your life. Anointing can break yoke. Anointing can deliver you. Anointing will heal you. Anointing will provoke the release of God's blessings in your life. Anointing can make you to become great. Anointing can make you to become a big person. But know that to maintain all the things the anointing will bring for you, to maintain your big position that the anointing will take you in its character. Anointing go along with character. If you are willing and you are obedient, that is a word. So the anointing, it goes with character. It is a character that keeps it. It is a character that keeps what you receive. This anointing, in Jesus' name, be free. In Jesus' name, be blessed. And you are blessed. The anointing is working. In Jesus' name, be delivered. And demons are crying. Demons are shouting. They go out. That is the anointing of God. That is the fire of God. That's the fire. The fire is in your life. It's burning. It's burning. So anytime you want to use it, in the name of Jesus, be free. That fire is burning. It is causing solution, bringing solution to people. You use it today. You use it tomorrow. In the name of Jesus, I am blessed. And things begin to work good for you. In the name of Jesus, I move from glory to glory. And you discover your life is moving from one big glory to another bigger glory. That's the anointing. That is a fire of God in you. Now, that thing that that anointing will bring for you, all those things, for us to maintain them, for us to keep them, character is important. Obedience to God's word is important. That is why somebody can receive today, tomorrow you are looking for it. What happened with what you received yesterday? Character, attitude, disobedience to divine instruction has given the devil an open door to come and collect everything, to steal out, to steal everything. That fire that God has put in you, that when you speak, people are blessed. When you speak, people are healed. That fire, that fire, for that fire to continue to burn, continue to burn, continue to burn, that fire needs oil. It needs oil. You know, lamp, in the villages, we have lamp. Those lamp, we light them with fire and we carry the lamp and it show light. It show light where darkness, where the darkness, the darkness go because the light has come. As you carry the lamp, as you carry the lamp, the darkness disappear. Why? Because the light has come. As you carry the lamp, you are coming, darkness is going. You come with lamp, darkness is going. This lamp you see is the anointing, is the fire, the fire that is burning in you. So as it is coming, light is going, darkness is going. It's coming, then it's going. But this fire, 
you see, this fire you see, it has oil, petrol, that is making the fire to continue to burn. If petrol finish here, if there is no petrol here, the fire will stop. What is that petrol that makes this fire? Be free in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be free. What is that petrol? It's love and compassion. Love and compassion. What we give to others, what we give to the needy, what we give, the love we give to others, and compassion we give, the love we give to the needy, the compassion we give, it keep this fire, it keep this fire, continue to burn, continue to burn, continue to burn. The day that that love and compassion finish, this fire, stop. The day it finish, the fire, stop. That is why, don't take your love life, play with it. That your life of love that you give, that you give, don't play with it. Play with every other thing, but don't play with that one. Tu peux blaguer avec toute autre chose, mais ta vie d'amoureuse, ta vie de donner, ta vie de soutien, de, de donner l'amour que tu donnes, la compassion que tu donnes, que tu donnes, ne blague jamais avec ça. C'est ça qui fait que la lumière la brille. La lumière brille en fait que tu étendes ta main aux autres, sois béni, tu déclares la parole, le ciel agit subitement. C'est parce que cette lampe-là, c'est un don gratuit que Dieu t'a donné. Mais le pétrole qui fait en sorte que cette lampe continue à brûler, ce n'est plus un don là-bas. C'est un command. It, it, it is no longer a gift. That one is not gift. It's a command. It's an instruction. And, and ton amour, compassion, est montré, est démontré par ce que tu donnes aux autres. The love, compassion is demonstrated by what we give to others. Mm -hmm. What the heart that gives. The fire is only gift from God. God gives. In Jesus' name, it's a gift. You do not work for it. Tu n'as pas travaillé pour ça. C'est un don gratuit. Mais pour que cette flamme continue, l'instruction c'est quoi? L'amour et la compassion. When God sees, the more God sees that obedience of love and compassion, the more that fire keep burning and increase. Keep burning and increase. Le plus que Dieu voit cet amour, cette compassion, plus que cette flamme continue à brûler. Le plus que cette flamme continue à brûler. Et Dieu augmente encore les flammes. They augmented and call God increased the flame in the name of Jesus. And that's why there are times you want to shout to God. You want to talk to God. You don't need to shout. Voilà pourquoi il y a les moments que quand tu veux parler à Dieu, tu n'as pas besoin de crier. Avant, avant même que la parole sorte de ta bouche, le ciel est déjà là pour résoudre. Before the word comes out from your mouth, heaven is already there to do it. You don't need to shout. God must not wait for you to cry before he comes. Why? There is always oil in your lamp. Pourquoi? Il y a toujours lui, il y a toujours le pétro dans ton lamp. Always oil in your lamp. I want to challenge every one of us. I want to challenge every one of us. We don't give because we have. 
No. We don't give because we have plenty. No. Mm -mm. And we don't give to people because they don't have. No. Not because they don't have. Not because we are helping them to survive. But we are putting petrol in our lamp. Mm -hmm. We are putting petrol in our lamp. There is a message I am preparing and God will give me grace to preach that message to us. The priesthood ministry in the New Testament. Il y a une message que j'ai en train de préparer et je crois que Dieu va me donner la grâce de prêcher ça à nous. Le ministère de sacrificateur, sacerdoce, dans le sens du Nouveau Testament. Quel est le ministère de sacerdoce dans le sens du Nouveau Testament? What's the ministry of the, the priesthood ministry? In the sense of the New Testament. Look, don't give it. We don't give it because we have too much. And we don't give it because people are in need. No. We do it. It's a divine instruction. And we are putting kerosene to the, to the, to the lamp to keep the lamp burning <laughs> we work where does our money go to does our money go only to us there must be someone somewhere benefiting from the money we are working there should be a needy there should be an orphan there should be a widow somewhere, a stranger somewhere also benefiting from the money that enter our pocket, even if it is $50 or $10. Mm -hmm. This is Rantres Kole. Palala Rantres Kole. Everyone is preparing for your children to go to school to attract more blessing. Think of one child who is not your child. One child who is not your child, buy even book for that child or pay school fee. Just that one is not your own child, but you want to pay the school fee. You want to buy the book for that child. Do this thing and you will see what it will provoke for you. Do it. it. You will see what it will provoke for you. One child who is not your own, then say, I want to pay school fee or I want to buy a book. One. Buy that book. Let that child, maybe you don't even have money for your own children, but think of one child. Think of one child. If we are willing and obedient, take this step of faith. You are willing and obedient. Yes, I am willing. Obey it and do it. See what God will do. Just obey it and do it and see what God will do. And see what God will do. I work very well, I work. But to be frank, much of my money go to gospel. Much of my money go to the gospel I'm preaching. There are times I pay school fee for people, their own children, that my own children, they drive them from school for school fee. Yeah, thank you, you pay la scolarité pour les enfants des gens, 
mais mes propres enfants sont à la maison, on les a chassés à l'école pour la pension. But I have paid for other people, their children to school. Mais j'ai payé pour les enfants des autres pour qu'ils fréquentent. But today, aujourd'hui, c'est quoi? God turn everything. Who is benefiting from all that is me? Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that act provoke uh, in the realm of the spirit a blessing. And today, I'm enjoying the blessing. Don't make, don't just, don't make calculation for rentes scolaire only for your children. Take one child or somebody and put there. Take one child or somebody and put there. One child. We make this. We are going to do for this. We are going to do for this one. We are going to do for this one. We're going to do for this one. I'm not telling you all this because I want to show you that I when I help people. No, that's not my that's not why I'm telling you. But we we preach with example. I cannot tell you to do what I say, but don't do what I do. Before telling you, I have acted on it. Before telling you, me, I've done it and it has worked. That is why I will tell you. That's why I will tell you. This is Rantis Kole. We have lists of people that we have supported. Not church, no one is no money from church account. My account pockets. You take, 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 take. We we'll pay the school fee, we we'll buy the books. We will pay the school fee, we we'll buy the books. We will pay the school fee, we we'll buy the books. But no list, my own children, we have made. Not because the money is there. If I put my financial needs to you now, many will have brain problems. If I take my financial needs now, I need, a, I need money to rent a hall now because we want to start Sunday service. I need a hall. How much? I told you about my family that are coming here. Now they are going to the embassy. I need money for flight. Five flight tickets, five. I need a hall. I need a bigger house now. I want to, I'm looking for a bigger house now. How much? Only five flight tickets is how much? Five. To make their passport, five is how many people? Medica, one person is 155,000 francs. That's about $300 for one person. Five is how much? Flight ticket. One, I have checked all now. I have not seen one flight ticket for $1,000. One. There is no one I have seen for $1,000 from now to September ending. No one. The hall we are looking for, if you want to get the hall that is cheap, is around $3,000. The house I've been looking, the cheapest one, cheapest one is $1,550 for one month. One month. But we have this. You, you support your school. You, you support. We, you support. But look at the financial need. Can what we have solve all these financial needs? No, it's small. So what do we do? We sow seeds. Use it as seeds for the gospel. Because that seed opens doors. It opens doors. I don't spend my money on my children in hospital. Mes enfants ne tombent pas malades. Je ne dépense pas mon argent à l'hôpital. Je ne dépense pas mon argent sur ma santé. Le fils de la musique que j'ai fait, l'œuvre de Dieu, Dieu fait aussi ce que moi je ne peux pas faire dans ma famille. 
The more I do God's work, God also do what me too I cannot do in my family. Amen. No one day they call, say, hey, the children are sick. We have to go to the hospital now. And you pay money, go to echography, go to lab, go to never. Why? Because as we are doing God's work, God is doing our own. Mm-hmm. He's doing our mm-hmm. own. Look, apply spiritual principle. Spiritual principle work for anyone who apply them. What are unbeliever? As they apply them, you work for them. The one you have in your hand now is small. Take some of it and sow it in somebody's life. Let it be a seed. The moment it becomes a seed, the harvest will be plenty. It will be plenty. When I say offering time, let's do offering. You see me take my card, do offering. I put it to, I don't only put the offering and it remain at the end. I put it. I put it. And what the church even produced is small to take care, to run the church. So my finance from pocket, I use it to run the ministry work you see. And I don't regret it because God does not stop blessing. No, he does not stop blessing. One day I will print my transaction record of the people of the assistance, help that we give out. Not church owner, oh my own. I will print all the financial transaction record. You see, only for one week, one week. You take you, eh, you, eh, you, eh. And no one gets less than $50. The small less is $50. $100, $200, $300. How much do we work? How much do they pay us? It is small. So it's a seed. Plant it. What you have for your school, for your children's school now is small. Include another person's child there. Another person's child there. Where you include another person's child, it becomes a seed. It becomes a seed. I'll tell you one testimony. A, 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 a daughter went to send me money. Now, I wasn't expecting money from her. And she didn't even tell me she wanted to send me money. In fact, we did not talk for in January, we did not talk. So she decided to, to send me money from where, from Cameroon. And she does not have my bank information. And she decided to send the money to my wife through mobile money. She used mobile money and send the money to my wife. So she did not... Tell my, mom, my wife she's sending money, she just sent the money, and that money was how much? It was 10,000 francs. Now, my wife now called me. I said, Somebody sent, call me that she sent money that is to for me to give you. She wants to, she has it as a body to, to bless you. <sighs> then I said, Ah. This person is in Cameroon, and to, my, to the best of my knowledge, she is struggling. And you are sending money to bless me. Then I understood. God now spoke that no. Don't look at it in that sense. Don't look at it in that sense. She has a situation she wants to solve. 
end, she decided to sow a seed, a, an offering to your life so that she can be blessed. Not like she is giving you because you don't have or because she has plenty, but it's a spiritual principle she's applying. So collect the money because it will work for her good. Now, when she went to the call box to give that money, immediately she went to the call box. She gave my wife's number. They put the number there. As they send that money, the girl fell on the road and evil spirit started manifesting there. On the road, too. she went to give money. As she sent the money, she fell on the road and evil spirit started manifesting. Eh? Why did she give that money? Eh? Why? We have been trying to stop her from giving this money. Eh? She has stopped on. She has come now and given the money. Eh? And somebody now recorded it. After she finished, they showed her. This is, hear what you were saying here. Yeah. Ah, what? And she sent it this, she sent it to my wife. My wife now sent it to me that after the transaction, this is what she said happened. And somebody recorded it. So that act alone was a voice in the spirit. And the doors that she has struggled by herself, it couldn't open. That voice, that offering did it for her. Mm. Don't yeah. play when it comes to gift. Don't play with it. And that's the secret of Papa T.B. Joshua that the world never understood. Everything you see him giving, you think he is just... <laughs> that nev there was never a time he tried to pray for somebody and the case, God did not answer. Why? His lamp always had enough petrol to keep the fire burning. So anytime you want to use the fire, there was enough fire to use. Don't keep everything for yourself. Don't keep it. There are seasons. Understand the season. Understand the season. Not because there is excess or there is much. I told you, if I draw my financial problem now, you will beg, you will know you don't have problem. If the list is long, it's long. Now I need I need more than fifteen thousand dollars now. Chef is only pretty king's me dollar. Maintenant. For just for one month, fifteen thousand dollars I need. But what do we do? I understand. I have to keep planting my seed, keep giving, keep. Where my children they stay, there was chicken pox. Comment on appelle chicken pox en français, Mireille? Varicelle. La varicelle. La varicelle. La varicelle. Il y avait la varicelle partout au quartier. Tous les enfants du quartier avaient ça. Tout. Eh. On a même filmé les enfants de Kati pendant comment ils ont assis dans une réunion entre eux. Ils disaient, il n'y a que les enfants de passer là qui n'ont pas la pharisée là. Mais nous, on est sûr que lui-même, il y aura, eux-mêmes, il y aura ça. On est sûr. On m'a envoyé la vidéo. J'ai regardé ça, j'ai ri. Les enfants qui sont le truc là, entrent même dans la maison. Mais pourquoi alors mes enfants n'ont pas attrapé ça? Ça a pris tous les enfants du quartier. Mais pourquoi alors les enfants là? Est-ce que les autres enfants ne prient pas? Il y a un engagement qu'on fait avec Dieu. Nous, on a compris le plan spirituel. 
et on fonctionne selon le plan spirituel. On ne fonctionne pas selon ce que tu vois. We don't function the way you see. We understand mm. spiritual truth. We function according to spiritual truth. That is how we function. I hardly keep money in my hand. It's a lie. As he enter, the next thing is I'm looking for who to begin to give. C'est difficile que je garde l'argent. C'est mensonge. Lorsque ça entre, la prochaine chose, je commence à chercher là où je vais donner. Là où je vais envoyer. Tu envoies. Donc l'argent ne doit pas être pour toi seul. Chercher quelqu'un, même si tu reçois tu reçois salaire de 10 dollars, chercher quelqu'un qui prend, et même si c'est 1 dollar ou c'est 50 cents, pour le soutien. Et voir si Dieu va, Dieu ne va jamais laisser que la source de cet argent s'éteigne parce qu'il sait que beaucoup de gens vont souffrir. God will not allow the source of that money to stop because he knows people will suffer. So before now, when my wife wants to bring some list to me, she will pity me. She will pity. Ah, I cannot give this list to daddy because I pity. He has a lot of things to do. I pity. But when she discovered that even the way she pity, The money that I, enter, I don't keep. I just go, go here, go there. Finally, she finally just told me when they see. Now, I just send our only quick, quick without pity because if I sit quiet, you will give that small one there all to outside. I will begin to look at you. So when there is her own list, she to send the list quick, quick. Say, no, I send my list quick so that before you share, let me also collect our own for the kit. All these things will not tell you. What will come? Stand, let's pray. In the name of Jesus. And you see the fire burning, bringing healing, bringing deliverance, bringing blessing. That fire is a gift from God. But the petrol that makes that fire to continue to burn is not gift, it's responsibility. It's a divine instruction, love. And compassion and that love is demonstrated in what in giving in giving mm. in giving that's how the love is demonstrated i was in melon today for miss for service and i preached with them finished preaching then i told them i had a vision this morning and that vision is that god wants to bless everybody here And they were happy. Amen. Amen. I say, yes, God wants to bless everybody. So God gave me that vision. He wants to bless everyone. But everyone should hold an offering of 1,000 francs and give you. So let them give you an offering of 1,000. I want to bless them. Now, I told them, this is what the instruction. Take 1,000 francs. You are going to give me. You are not giving it for the church or give it to, to buy other church microphone or what. No. Hold it. I will collect it. That's the offering. Give me. That's the instruction. Give me. I will take it. I will use it. It's going to provoke a release in the realm of the spirit. And I love their attitude because they quickly obeyed. Everybody just took their... Well, I say, if you don't have, it's okay. Don't feel bad. It is, it is not the foundation of the blessing for today. You will be blessed for today. That one, the one to provoke something in the realm of the spirit. The moment I said, so the first thing the devil did was they kept light. They kept the light. Then I laugh. The pastor quickly called me on WhatsApp and said that the devil not get sense. I say, yes, he knows what God wants to do and he wants to stop it. I called him on WhatsApp, on video. I say, okay, we are going to use WhatsApp video. By the time some people came with their own money, as they took it coming to the altar to drop, many evil spirits started manifesting. 
No, no, they must not drop. No, why? We are not praying. Only to remove that offering and come and drop it. No, and I can't see how people are struggling. They are coming to the altar to drop evil force is manifesting. No, they must not drop. Now to the church, if these people succeed to drop that money in that basket, them and the other thing, the devil, that evil spirit has been holding in their life for many years. It, that is a key to break it. That act of love and compassion, we break it. It's not because they are giving me, but it's an instruction in the realm of the spirit. It's a voice. It will do it more than what their prayer cannot do. I, no. And the moment they struggled, they, they took the basket and put the money. That was all. And after now, if God be God and God is true, things will happen. Look, don't play when it comes to love work. It never lies. It has never disappointed. It has never, never disappointed. Never. There are times you will enter my house, you will meet 17 people. Instead of 17 people, my own children are only two. The rest are people. How many room house? Those people will come and gather there. Some are sleeping in the parlor, on the floor, on the chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But God took care and took control. God took care and God took control. And each flight ticket now. Five people. It's a miracle. It's only a miracle. It's only a miracle. Five tick, flight ticket, bigger house. We need a hall for church. And uh, what else? So what's the miracle here now? Hey, God, situation no. God. No, those who know they are God will be strong. And we do exploit. That's the book of Daniel. They that know they are God. That's the book of Samuel. First Samuel. They that know they are God. Oh, that's the book of Daniel. And Samuel says, by strength shall no man prevail. By strength shall no man prevail. Daniel said, they that know they are God will be strong. And we will exploit. Amen. They that know knowledge, they are God. They that know they are God. There is a beggar along the street, far from a house. When we finish service on Sunday like this, I also collect my own money. I go and look for that beggar. It's a white man. Go and look for him. Buy things for him sometimes. Sometimes I'll take the money. I'll go and meet him. Stop. He specs at the red light. Stop light. Or stand there. Cars will be hurting, honing, pom, 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 pom. Stop there. But the moment I come and start with that car, he knows it already. He will just run and come to that car. When I give him, he says, God bless you. He doesn't even know me, Pastor. He does not know me personally. But it's just a body. I just collect my own Sundays and I drive. Ooh, go there. And a horn pump, he will just come. Say, take. All these things like this, you do it. Those who receive it, they know they are being helped. But in the realm of the spirit, it is working for you good. Don't play with it. Don't. That thing is powerful than your prayer. It produces result than the prayer. That thing alone is your prayer. Just that act is your prayer. And a guaranteed answer. I have not, since I came here, even while I was in Cameroon, I'm not fond of telling church to bless me. I'm not fond of doing that. Telling church, okay, today, raise an offering for me. No. I always struggle. What God bless me, I use. What comes to the church goes to the church. If you want to extend it, to give it to the needy, to help the orphan and the rest. Well, this morning, God said, let them do it. 
I've not done. Not because I don't, I, I'm in need. What they contribute that 1,000 francs at the end of the day, maybe it's $30. What, what, what would $30 do? Why, what? Because hey, it's their heart. I want to bless them, but they should do that thing. Okay, $30 just to send it here alone, charges. It's finished. It's finished. Because 1,000, 1,000, the children will not give. It is a adult that they not everybody has. Because not, nobody came prepared. So when they tell you, journey, or maybe it will be maybe $30, 15,000 or 20,000 francs, you will give it 30 or $40. What is it going to buy? Is it gas in the car? No, go simple. Let them do it. Let them do it. Receive it. I will take it. I will not, that money will come to me. I will receive it. And I will tell them, this is the money. I've got it. Then let God do what you want to do. Let God do what you want to do. There are many there that we just put on scholarship for school fee this year. In that same hall. You, your child, this your child, going to, you see, college, the school fee, leave it. The books, leave it. This one too, the school fee, the books, leave it. This one too. That, that's what we just did. Oh, that was not today we did that. Because they come now and say, hey, maybe that's the, the, the one going for college. They don't offend them first of all, no school. If it is professional, professional, private school, then the school fee should be work up high school with the books. Okay, now bring in a thousand francs. Rest it up, I want to pray. And to drop it was a problem. Oh, why? Why are you doing this? Why the most? The most... <laughs> no, it's not because you need it or the person need it, but I understand the spiritual principle. I understand it. I understand it. One day, that was two months ago, before they gave my wife, uh, before they gave them, approved their coming to the United States, I was praying. Then that week, that period I had, I had some money, but that period I just, I used that money for different things because I had some investment to put that money there. Then I had to buy the car. So, I had other things to do with money. Now, when, uh, by the same time, I was also praying for their documents. It has delayed. So that period, only that week alone, I spent, I spent just that week after buying the car, then the other things, discovered that I spent more than or just within a week, more than uh, more than ten thousand dollars, just within a week. So I sat that day. I went to work. Then I sat. I was like calculating my spending within a week, the things I've put money in within a week. Not like I saw that all that money in people's life. Part goes to some in people's life. There's some too for my own personal things. So why I was analyzing it. God talked to me. He said, this person, give him $200. Ah. Then I called him. I said, God said I should give you $200. He just fell down and was happy. I didn't know he had a problem. So it was later now he came to me that, that he, uh, actually I had a problem. And I was going to meet, I went to someone who promised to give me money. And I went to him, he did not give me the money. So I was contemplating on what to do before that call came. So I didn't even know. God just told me, give him $200. I just told him, the Lord is telling me to give you $200. And that's the other one. So that same night, as I was like assessing all my spending that night, a call came to my phone through Messenger. And I was like, who is this? This person, we don't communicate don't have my phone number, then why calling me on a messenger? I just decided to pick the call. I picked it. Hello? It was a woman from Cameroon. Say, please, I'm sorry to call you for my first time. 
with problem. I just with that kind of mood, I say, go ahead, what is it? He said, please, oh, I beg, help me, oh, my landlord, my landlady is disgracing me. Please, oh, I have been sick, all this while. No way to pay my house rent. Now the landlady is at my door. Please, probably help me, sir. I beg, help me. I said, calm down. Now, I almost empty everything I had. The small thing that remained there that I calculated to manage. Now she came with that cry. I thought 101 things at the same time. Then I asked her, what is the amount? I thought maybe she's going to tell me maybe 25,000 francs or 30,000 francs. How much is the money? Then she said 100,000 francs. That's about $200. I said, well, how much? She said, 100,000 francs. Then I look around, I look left, I look right. I say, God, is this a test? Or oh, it's a 101 thing within my mind at the same time. Then I took a deep breath. I told her, calm down, give me your account details. I'll send you the money. Immediately, within two minutes, she went to was messenger, type everything. I said, I did not waste time because if I had wasted time, I would have disobeyed. I would not give that money because I was almost empty. I did not waste time. Quickly, I just took my phone, took the information, put the woo within five minutes. That transaction went through. I said, oh, please, thank you. Thank you. Let me go and pay my landlord. I said, it's okay. Go and pay your landlord. She went and paid her bills. After one month later, that's how God now started intervening. You see, my wife, that issue just came up and very fast. God brought that one. But later, one month, she called me on phone. That same WhatsApp, she just wrote me a message. Sir, please, how do I give you back that your money that you gave me? Ah, do I send the money back to you? You really helped me that time. Then I, I told her, do you have the money? She said, I want to send the money. It's okay. What, you, what I did for you, look for someone to, that has situation that needs what you have. You to support that person. That is what you can give me back. Not that money. She's, why that you are? Thank you all. Spiritual principle, it works for everybody. So long as you know it, you understand it, you apply it, it will work for you. Don't allow the devil to cheat you. What I earned is very small for me. It cannot take care of me and my house. How, talk, how much will I even give to another person? Means will not have. It is small for you. It cannot be enough. That is why part of it should go for God's work. So that God will get involved. It will not stop coming. It's small. Plant it. Plant some. Plant some. Every time you harvest, there is always a seed from that harvest. If you eat your harvest and eat your seed, what happens tomorrow? You remove some is my seed. You remove some is my harvest. Get somebody. There is somebody in need. There is a widow. There is a widow orphan. There is a stranger. Come practice that kind of life, and you will see if God will ever embarrass you or allow situation to make you cry. The things you cannot do for yourself, that thing you are doing in the realm of the spirit is a voice that we command things for your favor. Mm. I'm using this opportunity to tell us because it's around a school year. Don't just make program for your children. Put one child from outside and you see what God will do in that, that school year for your own children. Mireya, no, you don't have a child. 
but you can look for somebody's own child. Whether it's one dollar, one pencil, one pen, you buy, or one book. Voilà déjà ce qu'il y a qui m'a grammé un mot. Tu connais l'histoire là? You get a one book. One. You will see. You will see. Not because you have plenty. Of, like I told you, we support, not because we have. We don't have. If I open my account, it's on my phone. I open it, I'll show you. Once it comes, as it comes, as it comes. Now, when I told anybody that, hey, family is coming, everybody, hey, thank God though, for you, oh, it's good though. And the next question is, uh, how many of them are there? I have four children with my wife, five. Boy, don't check the flight ticket. <laughs> yeah, I checked. Go and check Google, Cameroon, and United States, one way. No less than one time. There's no one. If you see one, one time, like, tell me I will book for it. I will collect, I will reserve it. So that's all we have for today. If you are willing and obedient, God is willing and God is faithful. If we do it in Jesus' name. Amen.